Does God exist? Is religion a force for good or evil? Can religion and science go hand in hand? To find some answers, I've come to Oxford, home to the oldest university in the English-speaking world and the place where I studied as an undergraduate. One of the jewels in this city's crown is the Oxford Union, the debating chamber that's witnessed such legendary orators as Winston Churchill, Benazir Bhutto and, of course, Kermit the Frog. I've come back to the Union today to sit down with the world's most famous atheist, Professor Richard Dawkins, to put faith on trial and to ask, is religion evil? Muslims riot in protest against a truly awful film demonizing Islam. Dozens are killed. The Quran, if found guilty, can be burned. A Christian pastor in Florida tries to burn a copy of the Quran and ignites global pandemonium. Even Buddhists are at it, attacking the Muslim minority Rohingyas in Western Burma. And of course, the conflicts plaguing the modern Middle East are often blamed on ancient hatreds between the children of Abraham. Remember 9-11? Was this religiously inspired terrorism? Thousands died. Yet here's the thing. Societies without faith haven't fared much better. Communism banned all religions, as Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong systematically slaughtered millions of their own countrymen. Is science any better? Since Galileo and Darwin, scientists have sought to stamp out ignorance and unravel the mysteries of the universe. But science has also poisoned the environment, unleashed killing on an industrial scale, and now threatens our entire planet. My guest today, however, stands firmly on the side of science and has provoked controversy with his attacks on religion. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Richard Dawkins. One of the most prolific thinkers of his generation, he shot to fame in the 1970s with his research into genetics, and his book, The Selfish Gene, transformed evolutionary biology. His most famous work, The God Delusion, sold millions of copies and has been translated into more than 30 languages. Richard, thanks so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Before we go any further, I just want to check something. Are you an atheist? For all practical purposes, yes. You... Uh, nobody can actually say for certain that anything doesn't exist. But I'm an atheist in the same way as I'm an a leprechaunist and an a fairyist and an a pig unicornist. So you're not 100% sure God doesn't exist, but you're sure enough to make it practically. I'm as sure as you are sure that fairies and leprechauns don't exist. And do you see an equivalence between the idea of God and the idea of a fairy and a leprechaun? The evidence for both is equally poor. You say in The God Delusion, one of my favourite sentences that jumps out of the page, that the God of the Old Testament is a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capricious, malevolent bully. As a piece of rhetoric, superb. But do you really believe that? Congratulations on getting megalomaniacal right, by the way. Most people, <laughs> most people fumble on that. Yes, if you've actually read the Old Testament, I think you would have to agree. Uh, it is, it's hideous. It's an anti-the God of the Old Testament who is a monster. But also the God of the Quran, the New Testament, the Hindu scripture? Well, um, the God of the Quran, I don't know so much about. The God of the New Testament is widely advertised as being a bit, a bit more gentle. Uh, and certainly, on the whole, he is. There are things about the New Testament that I find, in a way, almost more objectionable than the Old Testament. Um, but the sheer horror of the character, I, I said he was the most unpleasant character in all fiction, uh, because I regard it as fiction, of course. Um, and yes, he is. I mean, he's, he's jealous, he's vindictive, he's callous, he's cruel. And yet uh, this is a god that is worshipped by, loved by, adored by, well, followed by millions, billions I hope of people. Not. I hope not. I hope that the God that is adored by millions of people is a grown-up kind of God who is no longer... I hope that most people who... The kind of people I would 
like to know who worship and admire him regard those stories as not literally true. Now there are some who do regard them as literally true and uh, I, th I suspect they either haven't read the Old Testament or um, they're not the kind of people I would wish to know because, because you, don't, you do not win what, want to worship a character like that. By all means, worship some kind of um, great spirit of the universe, some kind of creative intelligence who, who created the universe, but don't worship this vile, vindictive monster of so the Old why Testament. Throw away, why throw around these sweeping statements about religion? not the God of the Old Testament, but religion itself being evil. I mean, do you believe religion is evil? Mm, no. But you say plenty of times in this book that religion is evil. You said in a speech famously that I think a case can be made that faith is one of the world's great evils, comparable to the smallpox virus, virus but harder to eradicate. I do think that, yes. Uh, because um, what I'm talking about there is faith, where faith means belief in something without evidence. Because if you believe something without evidence, then that justifies anything. You, you're no longer vulnerable to somebody coming back at you and saying, hang on a minute, let me argue the case. If you believe it without evidence, which is what faith is, then you don't argue the case. You say, no, I'm not arguing that case. This is my faith. It's mine. It's private. I don't, dis I don't dissent from it. I don't retreat from it. You're just going to have to accept it. Now, that is evil. And yet you spend so much of your time debating people of faith. So clearly people of faith are interested in having discussions. They're not just all blind believers insisting on their way of... Well, nobody said anything about all of them. I mean, the vast majority of religious people are perfectly good, nice people uh, um, as you are. There, there's no suggestion I've ever made that all religious people are evil. Of course not. There is a logical progression that goes from believing in faith, having faith that, 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 you, that your God tells you to do something, and doing terrible deeds like suicide bombing, like flying planes into, into skyscrapers. The vast majority of people of faith don't do such terrible things. But well, well, those well, people who do terrible things do it believing that they are righteous and good and they think that they're doing the will of their God. So they are, they're not evil people, they're actually good people by their own lights. They believe they're doing good things and that's why religion is evil because it can make you do evil things believing that they are good. Do you really believe that people who go out and carry out suicide bombings, it is faith, religion is to blame, not geopolitics, not the world, not their lives, not what's going on around us, it's religion, plain and simple? Not always, since not in the case of the Tamil Tigers, for example, um, but I think in a great majority of cases it is, and I think it certainly makes it a hell of a lot easier. The evidence is plain that, that in many um, Islamic suicide bombers, you talk to them, those who fail, you talk to them afterwards, they've got paradise on the brain. They, they're desperate to go to a martyr's heaven, and that's what they think about. Professor Robert Pape of the University of Chicago studied every yeah, known I, case I know. of suicide terrorism, yeah. 315 yeah. cases, and he came to the conclusion that there's, quote, little connection between suicide terrorism and Islamic fundamentalism or any of the world's religions. The taproot of suicide terrorism, he says, is nationalism. It's about land, it's about power, it's about politics. It's not about faith. Faith is just a cover. What do you know that he doesn't know? Well, um, I've seen other, other evidence. There are different people who say, say different things. I've seen plenty of, of testimonies testimonies of uh, suicide bombers who have said precisely that they do it because they want a martyr's paradise. Do you include the 7-7 seven, seven bombers in that case as well? Uh, I, yes, I believe so. Have you watched their suicide videos? Uh, I'm not sure that I have, no. They talk about Afghanistan, they talk about Iraq, they talk about crusades, they talk about war between the West and the Muslim world, they talk about invading armies. I mean, there's a lot of, of real-world stuff in there. I'm not saying, of course not, that faith hasn't, doesn't play a role, but I'm just interested in this idea that you think faith is, is the issue. You, say, you said in a very famous column you wrote, four days after 9-11, that this came from religion? There are enormously good reasons for people to take political action, and this, and this we see in Northern Ireland, we see it in Afghanistan, um, we see it uh, in, in Sri Lanka where the Tamil Tigers um, operated. So yes, there are political reasons, but the promise of, of a martyr's heaven, which is, it, you cannot deny that this is part of Islamic doctrine. Um, um, martyrs go straight to paradise. Yes, but not, but not terrorists, not murderers, not criminals. 
Well, they believe that because they're told it by their imams. But then what about the majority of the world's Muslim clerics yeah. and uh, ulama who came out and condemned 9-11? Well, I'm afterwards? delighted they did, but uh, they were pretty quiet about it. What about the argument that says human beings are prone to violence? They're prone to carrying out crimes against their fellow man. You can blame religion, you can blame politics, you can blame economics. Lots of factors, lots of excuses. Why on, what I don't get is why do you only focus on religion? For fairness, why don't you also isolate the other factors? There are lots of other factors, and I'm, I'm quite happy to say that, yes. There are, there are lots of, I mean, if you look at the wars of history, um, some of them have been about religion, plenty of them have not been about religion. I never said religion is the, the, the sole cause of, of wars and, and uh, violence. You, you may not have said that, but you would accept that the new atheists, people like Sam Harris, the late Christopher Hitchens, have blamed a lot of history's wars on God and religion, and you make a similar no, suggestion would, in The would, God Delusion. Yeah, I would blame a lot of history's wars, but the most terrible wars in history, the two major wars of the, se of the 20th century, are nothing to do with religion. Those you are, you those accept are, that point? Uh, yeah, of course. And I the do. Cold War and Vietnam? Yes, I would, of, of course, yes. So when you have a situation where some of the world's worst crimes were carried out not by believers, how then does that square with your idea that it's religion that causes good people to do bad things, it's religion that's driving violence, your original statement against religion at the start of this? Dogmatic belief in something like religion or something like Marxism or something like Nazism, uh, these are all, or, or indeed patriotism, I mean my country right or wrong, these are all pernicious beliefs which can drive people to do, to do terrible things. And in the Second World War, um, Hitlerism was driven by, um, by, by racism, by a sort of um, sub-Wagnerian pagan religion which Hitler uh, revived. Um, Stalin's atrocities were, were motivated by uh, a dogmatic belief in Marxism. Um, and atheism. Stalin happened to be an atheist, but he was never motivated specifically. Soviet Union was not based on scientific rationalism, on the elimination of religion and God? So, um, St Stalin persecuted the church. He passed, Stalin persecuted just about everybody. Are you saying that the Soviet Union, the leaders of the Soviet Union, were not driven by a hatred of religion and a, and a belief that science and human progress and materialism was the way forward? They believed that materialism, science, human progress, those are kind of, Mar there was a Marxist slant on those, on those words, and they were hideously misused. Mao Zedong, when he invaded Tibet, told the Dalai Lama that religion is poison. The subtext to the late Christopher Hitchens book was religion poisons everything. Can you blame people of religion for saying, hold on, we've heard these ideas before, that religion poisons everything, and it leads in one direction? It's an incidental fact that Mao Zedong and Stalin happened to be atheists. They incidental, were not it, wasn't, it wasn't core to communism. It, I, I think it was not core to communism, no. So when Karl Marx was talking about religion being the opiate of the masses, that was just a throwaway line? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was, that was um, uh, an out-of-context um, statement. I'm, I mean, what, what, what on earth do you think that's got to do with atheism? I don't know. Let me put a statement in context to you. Albania, one of the world's worst dictatorships, tyrannies that we've seen in the last hundred years. Article 37 of Albania's communist constitution declared, quote, the state recognizes no religion and supports atheistic propaganda in order to implant a scientific, materialistic world outlook in people. What do you think you're saying? I mean, that's an appalling thing to say. Of course it is. Why is that an appalling thing to say? What do you disagree with in that statement? Why would I want to support atheistic propaganda? I support science and truth. But you don't support spreading atheism? I support spreading science and truth. If that happens to be atheism, I, su I support it. I'm not going to s start bullying people into, into being atheists. I'm not going to start um, uh, trying to compel people to be, to be atheists. That was what the Albanians were doing. It's nothing to do you, with what I wanted like to do. Of course, but you'd like to persuade them not to be believers like to and raise, become atheists. I'd like to raise consciousness in a gentle, civilized way, using argument, rational argument, from evidence. In your book, you cite lots of evidence for the bad things religions done. What I wonder is, if you were being fair, wouldn't you have also included some of the good things that religion's done? My passion is for scientific truth. I don't much care about what's good and evil, actually. I care about what's true.